Yeah, there definitely were people who didn't like us, like who turned on us at that point for, for sure, sure. When when Blood Sugar came out, like for sure. Yeah, there was definitely people that liked the the fast punk punk thing and and uh, felt that we were selling out or whatever. You know, yeah. I remember one interviewer came to the Blood Sugar House and he said, "So when are you guys playing Vegas?" And I said, <laughs> and, and I said. I said, "Oh, we're we're playing in Vegas in August or whatever." Like I thought he actually meant yeah, yeah. You're, when you're playing Went in Las Vegas, door, yeah, yeah. And and then and then I go, "Oh, okay, <laughs> I see what what That's you meant." So funny, yeah. Like like, and I'm sure I said something really rude to him, but but yeah, like we got a little of that. I even remember like some punk kids like protesting at one of our shows and flea walking wow. out and talking to them and stuff yeah. and like, but uh. In the long run, it definitely worked out, you know. It, like something similar happened in by the way time as well. Like, mm -hmm. like we went so far in this other direction that wasn't mm -hmm. what people expected. And in the big picture, I think we gained more fans than we lost. But but there were people who felt like like the thing that they liked about the band, we weren't doing that anymore, you know. Yeah. But I think you know. I, know, I think artistically, it's good to take those, you know, to take those risks and absolutely. And and I think for us, it worked out career wise in the long run because uh, I think people definitely think of us more as this band that makes these melodic, you know, pop tunes than they think of us as a funk punk band anymore. You know, yeah, yeah. And we're still able to compete with bands who do go for a complete heavy onslaught type sound mm -hmm. we we still have a very intense power like we never lost that you know which is i think why maybe even though sometimes we might have thrown some people off and initially they might not have liked the new direction or whatever like i think a lot of the time those people it, it grew on them you know mm -hmm. I've, I've never talked to you about this obviously i talked to anthony about it because i was with him at the beginning when it happened but um for Under the Bridge, I remember finding the lyrics in his book. Was, I've told the story before, but I remember finding the lyrics, and I remember him saying, that's not a Chili Pepper song, because it was still in those days, that couldn't be a Chili Pepper song. And I said, well, try sing it to the band, see what happens. And he was very resistant, very resistant. And then he ended up playing it for you, or singing it to you. Mm. And then you came up with the music. And I remember he was still terrified for you and him to present it to the rest of the band because right. it seemed so far outside of anything that had come before it. But I wanted to ask you about it. What was your experience when he first, because I wasn't there when he, when he sang it to you. What was that like? My memory of it's a little different. I remember you and Anthony coming to rehearsal and you really urging him to do it and him making a bunch of disclaimers and yeah. you just really encouraging him to to sing it to us and he sang it to us and uh flea and i flea drove me home often in those days and mm -hmm. and flea and i driving home and it made us really sad under the bridge hearing it just made us feel like boy anthony's really bummed out like like it's heavy. heavy yeah words. like heavy words yeah, we just felt really like bad for him, and it was just this like sad kind of experience. And and going back to my house and just thinking, boy, that song is a real bummer, you know. Like, not meaning in a, that it's bad, meaning no, like no, no. That emotionally. Yes. Yeah, like I thought of it as a song about that he doesn't have any friends. That's mm. that was how I described it in my head. But with your encouragement and with feeling, having a feeling that that there was something there. Anthony and I made a plan for for me to go to his house. And I, I wasn't super looking forward to the thing. Like I, I thought of it as a depressing. Yeah. And as a friend, not really knowing how to like, how to be there for that part of him, you know, like, like uh, I, I guess I felt maybe in some ways like he didn't feel like I was there for him as a friend or something. But we got together to do it, and I had I had some vague ideas in my head. I thought, there's these Jimi Hendrix songs. There's a couple of them on Axis Bold is Love, uh, the song Bold is Love. Mm -hmm. And it's it's got this kind of chord progression that's very similar chord progression to the chord progression of uh, of Under the Bridge, where it's...